I want you to take a look at the image that's on the screen. It's probably going to scare you because it looks rather complicated. But the entire idea of this video is to distill this down. Now what this image is portraying is it's showing how a particular peptide that's increasing in popularity can modulate reactive oxygen species, oxidative stress in the brain, to ultimately, potentially reduce neuroinflammation. Now, let me dive into this a little bit. The peptide that I'm talking about for cognition is one called TB500. And the research is very, very promising, but I have to be very clear here. Peptides are a weird territory, and I am not a clinician. Okay, I have had my personal experience with them, but I can tell you straight up, when you look at peptide research, you have to be okay with looking at rodent model and in vitro research until the human model data comes out. So very full disclaimer. However, comma, the results are promising and they definitely warranted a video. So we're gonna talk about this peptide and how this might work. After today's video, I put a link down below for 50% off Haya. Now, if you have kids like I do, Haya is a tremendous way to give them a tasty multivitamin. So this stuff is sweetened with monk fruit. My kids love it. Heck, I end up taking them too because they taste good. There's nothing bad in it. It's just a monk fruit sweetened chewable vitamin. Like when I grew up, we had Flintstone vitamins. We had these sugar filled things that were like more sugar than they were actual micronutrients. It was a total joke. So the idea behind Haya is just instilling good habits. Instilling good habits with the kids, teaching them that it can be fun. My kids get to decorate the bottles and like, I don't know, they just have a blast with it. It actually has become a little ritual, which in and of itself is just kind of fun. Even when we travel, they want to bring them. So 50% off Haya multivitamin for kiddos and also for you if you're just a fun parent that likes tasty things. So that link is down below, saves you 50% off. Darren and Adam, who are the founders, are very good friends of mine. They have kids, they have very similar moral compass values with their kids. And I think you'll probably agree as well. You'll probably be in the same boat. So that link is down below underneath this video. So the cognition piece, not a lot of peptides have heavily looked here, okay? Because thymosine beta-4, I've done other videos on it, thymosine beta-4 is predominantly known for like injury repair, possible muscle recovery. But one of sort of the side findings that was discovered in some of this other rodent model research was that there were decreases in potential inflammatory markers. And they first found this with a study on mice and sepsis, which is obviously like, when you have a rampant infection going on throughout your body, you've gone septic. Obviously a high mortality risk with that. They found that TB500 reduced the mortality risk with sepsis, and they found that consequently, or possibly, I guess causatively, was because of the massive reductions in inflammatory cytokines. So with this, they're like, wait a minute, there could be an anti-inflammatory effect. Maybe that's why people get such muscle recovery from it. We have to look directly at the brain and there's some interesting rodent model research here. The first study was published in neuroinflammation. It was done in mice. And what they did is they triggered the expression of more what is called thymosine beta-4. You've probably heard these two terms, thymosine beta-4 and TB500. Thymosine beta-4 and TB500 are the same thing. TB500 is more almost the trade name for the synthetic peptide. Thymosine beta-4 is what the thymus actually produces in response to an injury or trauma or potentially even inflammation. So they triggered these mice to produce more of this thymosine beta-4. What they found is that it decreased amyloid beta formation, which if you've ever heard any of the like cognitive decline research or neurodegenerative condition research, you know that amyloid beta is a popular term. Now it's come into the headlines over the last couple of years as possibly not being the causative factor for things like neurodegenerative conditions, dementia, Alzheimer's. However, we do still know there's a strong correlation. Anyway, if you're reducing it, it's seemingly a good thing. But more importantly, it restored the function and the activity of the microglia cells, meaning that the sort of immune system in the brain was regulated and acting normal, less inflammation happening at a brain level. Now it continues. It also increased neuron function brain cells were firing better. Now, if you were to extend this onto cognitive tasks for working memory, spatial memory, executive function, you would probably, asterisk, see an improvement, right? But we didn't look at that because this is all new. And the idea of this channel is bringing you newer stuff. As more stuff comes out, I'll talk about it. Anyhow, the big factor here is there seemed to be a reduction in neuroinflammation. And I want you to think of this, this is a simple colloquial way of putting it, but think of your brain as like a bunch of super highways, bunch of highways sending messages, and there's a bunch of couriers going back and forth on these highways. 
but all of a sudden there's this like a thick blanket of fog that comes over and these carriers cannot just get from neuron to neuron and it's just foggy. That's like neuroinflammation in a simple way. It's like the messages just don't get where they're going because maybe there's some car crashes, maybe they have to go slow to make sure they don't hit a wildebeest in the fog, you know, anything like that. But when you lift that fog, then all of a sudden people can go 100 miles an hour like they do on the freeways, right? It's just, that's the way it is. But if you look specifically at the mechanisms, there's reductions in what's called toll-like receptor four and reductions in sort of a master regulatory switch known as nuclear factor kappa B, which is more the expression at the genetic level of inflammation. And we've seen that in the literature with mice. So maybe there's some direct ways that it's modulating inflammation at sort of a genetic level, like expressing more uh, or expressing less of nuclear factor kappa B. But the first image that I showed you on the screen demonstrates that there's a reduction in oxidative stress. This makes sense because when you look at how thymosine beta-4 works in wound healing, it increases angiogenesis, so more blood flow to an area, and it increases collagen deposition in proper, more bioidentical ways. So you have proper healing. To have this occur, like you would need to have inflammation reduced. Now think about it like this, if you have an injury, at first you have acute inflammation that protects the injury, but eventually you want the inflammation to come down so that you can get blood flow to the area. So perhaps part of more blood flow and more angiogenesis is reducing the inflammatory response surrounding it. So very promising literature here. Now, when you look at like the dosing strategy, like it's all over the place. and I cannot tell you the dosing strategy to take. That's not my job. I can point you in the right direction with you know, proper content and proper like physicians. Dr. Kyle Gillette is a great person to look at for this kind of stuff. Merrick Health, even more plates, more dates has some good stuff on this. But one of the things that you wanna consider is like thymosine beta-4, TB500, is probably not gonna give you this like immediate brain effect. But what you might notice and what I noticed even with my short sense of taking it is that in combination with like uh, copper peptides like GHK and also with things like BPC-157, my recovery was significantly better. So I was able to get by with slightly less sleep, not that I wanted to, but I mean, it was just, and my recovery was still good. I felt less achy, I felt less inflamed, and that did directly translate into my cognitive function. So much so that when I actually went off of it, I felt a difference in how my brain functioned. And I live a pretty anti-inflammatory lifestyle. So all I'm saying here is that more research needs to be done. And if you look at the literature published in the Journal of Cellular and Molecular Health, we are pushing forward into clinical trials now because we've seen that it seems to be safe in these preliminary human trials of single dose and multi-dose, which is very promising and a little bit relieving. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.